Welcome. My name is Dylan Schumacher. Uh, just two weeks ago, I was promised that this was a temporary order. We're going to have a sunset provision. There's no penalty clause. We've got to do something. And now we are here two, three weeks ago, and we already want to extend this until March. And I wonder how long before we do the same bait and switch with the no penalty clause. This Council of Redcoats is an, exact, it is an excellent example of why we used to tar and feather people in this country. A body of petty tyrants who want to overstep their bounds. The trampling of individual civil rights to legislate its way out of a virus is as short-sighted, inept, and dim-witted as it sounds. We have a virus with a 99% survival rate, which to my knowledge, no virus anywhere has ever obeyed the laws that men make. Yet, we're trying to fix this with ink and high-minded deliberations. If lockdowns and masks are effective, then why has every state that has had lockdowns had to reissue them? If masks work, why in Minnesota, where they've had mask mandates for months, are they still having spiking in cases? I moved to this state specifically to avoid this kind of problem. And I can't believe that I have to be the one to tell you this, but part of your job is to protect my rights. This is America. We have a body of government that derives its power from the consent of the governed. Part of your job is to form my, protect my rights to life, my rights to liberty, and my rights to happiness. And yet, the, the cowardly rhetoric that I often hear when I, when I watch the tapes back from this council is something along the lines of, I believe in liberty, but. And this backdoor language reveals that you have as much concern for liberties as the Tories who preceded you. You can't make a law requiring face coverings. I mean, yeah, we can vote on it, and you're going to bang a little hammer, and we're going to write it into law. I, I get that. But you don't have the authority. We're not serfs. We're not slaves in this country. We are free citizens, and we have enumerated rights that are outside of your reach. I don't want to be here. I shouldn't have to be here. I'd rather be at home, watching a movie, drinking some bourbon, hanging out with my kids. Instead, I have to come down here because either your lust for power or your fear or your felt need to do something has compelled you to sacrifice on the altar of safety our most important safeguard. Our civil rights keep us safe. Our civil rights are what keep us safe. Not the police, not the government, not the laws, and most assuredly, not a burqa edict. I am far more concerned with a group of people who want to take away my rights than I will ever be of some mindless virus. A virus is going to come and go. But someone who thinks they need to make me do something for my own good won't stop until I obey all their decrees. You might say I'm making too big a deal of this. It's just a mask. It's a special circumstance. It's only temporary, you might plead. And to that, I would reply that, again, the virus will come and go. But freedom, which was paid for in blood, is easily lost and not soon regained. And I intend, with the full vigor of all of my faculties, to keep every ounce of liberty that's been afforded to me. Braver men and women than you have sacrificed more on that altar than you could fathom. And they did it to purchase what actually keeps me safe. They spent it to preserve my rights and my freedoms. They spent their very lifeblood so I could be a free man in a free nation with a free people. And I would sooner join their sacrifice than give up an iota of the precious gift that they have entrusted us to safeguard. Thank you, Dylan. Others who'd like to have input tonight.